Hello, YouTubers. Hello, subscribers. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Kisses to all of you. Thank you so much for your love and your support. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you to all my loyal subscribers. Don't forget to hit like and share and comment if you enjoy the video. I have little rock a -do little with me right now, and we're going to get started. Also, I want to wish William a very happy birthday. He looks so handsome in that suit. That's his signature look. <laughs> also, I want to say a uh, Say, I hope my subscriber in um, Oklahoma gets their lights on soon. It was a bad tornado there, and I am sending up prayers for you guys. Mwah. Let's get started. So, I was watching Dan Wooden's show. I've watched four, um, a couple of shows, and I'm going to touch on a, a few of them. Dan Wooden was on with Angela Livin. And they were talking about how Megan is having a bad week. Well, of course she is. Everything that she's done in the past six years is coming back to bite her. It's she's coming, and I don't know if she's regretting any of this stuff, but her, what's going on, what I'm seeing is her, is the downfall of her is spilling out in the streets. The things that are going on with Megan that are negative, people are coming out uh, exposing her, talking about her, and calling them grifters, calling them con artists. Con you don't have to call them a con artist. You call them a grifter. That's a nicer way to call them a con artist. It's very sad what's going on with her because I still don't believe that she sees that she has... It's any of her fault. None of this is Megan's fault. She blames everything and everyone else for the things that happen in her life. And once again, she's done that again today. I was listening to uh, Neil Sean, and he was telling us how she was telling, you know, through a source, how it wasn't her fault that Spotify it wasn't her fault that Spotify um, forced or, or had her forced or made her or suggested or suggested that she didn't do the interview. For some reason, I think she needs to be very careful in what she says because when she lies, they show receipts. Unlike the royal family, they can't show receipts. Point in case. The car chase. She lied and said that they were in a two-hour car chase downtown Manhattan for two hours. That was a lie. And the mayor came out and said as much and said he doubts very seriously if that happened. Okay. Once again, on the Neil Sean show, she's trying to tell us that it wasn't her fault that she didn't interview these people. Oh, yes, it was. You thought you were too big to interview these people. They wasn't, they wasn't A-lister enough for you. Because I doubt it very seriously that a company is going to pay you $20 million and then all of a sudden say, oh, that's okay. You don't have to do the legwork. We'll do it for you. Why would I pay you $20 million to do the work that I've asked, told? Why would I pay you the money that you are supposed to provide for me? If that's the case, I can do it myself. I believe that she was having a very difficult time doing the podcast because she doesn't know what she's doing. This is not like this is her field of expertise or, or something that she has been doing or has done. No, you would think it would be easy because she's just reading, but she's not interesting. She couldn't even ask Serena some good questions for us to be like, oh, did you know that about Serena? Then she has Harry on there asking Serena about her hair. It was so forced and fake. 
And I just believe that Serena was doing it as a favor. <laughs> and I don't believe that they're the best of friends. I don't. I believe Serena has found out that Megan is a big time liar. And you can't help but to. It's coming out all over the place. When Bill Simmons said that Harry, this is what this is what was interesting to me about Bill's statement is that he called them both grifters. But what was interesting is that he was supposed to be, Harry was supposed to want, be the one that come up with a story. How is Harry going to come up with a story about he's in a foreign country with a foreign woman doing foreign stuff and he is supposed to come up with a podcast? No, that's why Bill was trying to help him. But since Harry didn't listen and, and go through it or whatever, it failed. That podcast didn't even come out. But what I believe is happening is that Megan is blaming Harry everything. That's her mode, M-O. That's what she does. I'll get into that in a minute. And so I found it kind of weird that Harry was supposed to be interviewing people or having a podcast or whatever. If you haven't noticed, remember that Superman thing that Harry came out looking foolish at and oof, damaged his brand looking like Superman or Spider-Man or something crazy like that? It was this, It's so gimmicky. It diminishes his brand and makes him watered down and just like, what is he doing? He is a prince. He is supposed to be hanging out with dignitaries and doing great things and being an influencer. But instead, he's over here playing, playing, give, give my wife a brand in, the, in, in California. Because it's all we have been talking about since she left the UK is building Megan's brand. She has gone through several companies. And now she's with this new company that think they're going to save her because they've been working with all the other stars. First, first of all, those stars put in the work and the dedication and the, what they needed to do to become. Megan isn't putting in the work. If she was, then other people wouldn't be doing her podcast. She would have done all 12 and then, then some. Stephen Smith. I believe I heard this on uh, Paula M station where he was confused and not confused mentioning them, the fact that Spotify fired them and gave them two twenty million dollars or they had this contract as we know and they had a contract with them and they didn't even bring the content why would I pay you to do a show and then you don't even do the show. You have someone else do it. It's like the Millie Vanilli moment. When they were singing and lip singing and other people were singing for them, it ruined them. Because number, first of all, Americans don't wanna be lied to. And, 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 and Megan could twist the story and fix it and rub it around to make it seem different all the time but the bottom line is it's deception it's con like Stephen Smith said he had to look up the word grifter just like I did and it means con artist someone that is scamming you for money she went in there with the Duchess of Sussex talking a big game they signed her Trusting and believing in her because I'm sure she was in there talking about I can do it Because when she was on that commercial where she says Testing testing one two three. Are we ready? I'm just so glad that I can sit here and talk about you know, whatever I want to without being filtered That's all I want to do no, you want to jump start. You want to, this is what you want to do. You want to marry a prince and then become president all in one week. But that's not how it is. People in the United States are looking at you like, okay, so what are you about? And then when you tell us what you're about, we realize that you've been lying and manipulating all the way up. 
It started with the trashing of the family. Like Stephen said, well, there he mentioned the that they were, you know, being negative toward, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. But everybody else is saying it now, how she went after the royal family. They wasn't talking about that over here in the United States weeks ago. Now they're talking about how Harry, her and Harry are victims and over here, not the UK, over here. It makes a difference because if, if, if you're going to be here, you can't be negative. You can't, you can't have this negative press. You can't have people talking about that you didn't actually do the interview, but then you tell us that you did. And you pretend and act like you did. It's To me, it's a fraud moment. Con artist. And I believe Spotify was trying to help them out, like Bill said. But, but for the life of me, why did Spotify and any of, like he said, he wasn't in the negotiations. But why would anyone think that Prince Harry would have the talent to do anything other than be a prince? And that's not being negative. That's just being real. Harry is an expert at being a royal. He is good at that. He doesn't need training on that. But then you're going to have him do a podcast in a foreign country with a foreign woman. He doesn't know how to interview people. He's being interviewed. Give me a moment. So, I don't know. I've done this video like five times. So, I don't know what all I've said or didn't say. So, if I repeat myself, hey, you just got a double dose of it, okay? So, I was watching Dan Witten and Angela Living today. And what struck me as interesting is that he talked about how Megan was having a bad week. No, it's bad. It's more than just a bad week. It's more or less like, I don't know what you call it. And he showed a clip of Bill, um, Bill's segment where he's calling Harry and Megan grifters, con artists. And then um, he talks about Kelly Osborne's moment when she's pretty much pissed off at Harry. And probably it just seems like she's disappointed in him. And disappointed in the way he's acting. And it's just, it is disappointing. Whining, blaming, pointing the finger, you know, spoiled brat. A rich entitled prince that married a woman that was triple, triple felt she's entitled. She didn't interview those people on a Spotify because she didn't think that they were important enough. But according to Neil Sean, I'm skipping, is that she's doubling down on, well, she's saying that basically and I think I said this yesterday, that it was Spotify that pushed her or suggested, suggested or made her do it that way where she wasn't interviewing the others. Instead of interviewing, she, inter, she interviewed all the A-listers, but not all the D-listers. And it was Spotify's fault because of that. Why can't she take responsibility for the fact that it failed or it just didn't work out or it just ended the way it did? Why does she always have to be the one that it wasn't my fault? Never taking accountability. Because here's what happened, Megan. A company paid you or contracted you out. I don't know how much they paid her. Who cares? $20 million to do a podcast. And instead of doing it, and I know she was on there telling them what to do and what she was going to do. And she told them, I'm not interviewing those people. I want to only interview Serena then. Oh, okay. 
and I, it blows my mind on why, like um, Bill Simmons said, why wouldn't she just insist? Or Neil Sean said, Neil Sean said, why didn't she just insist on doing it? Why would you allow yourself to be put in a situation where you have almost a milli vanilli effect, where you didn't do it at all? But the kicker is, is her blaming. The blame is here again. Mm -hmm. It's all someone else's fault. It's not her fault. If they wanted me to do it, then why didn't they push me to do it? Then why did they have me do it this way? And see, the difference in her telling her side of the story is... The difference in her telling her side of the story is, is she going to get caught up in a lie? And she already has. Like she lied about the two-hour car chase in New York City that was going for two hours, chasing them the paparazzi and all of that. Look at the damage that she caused or could have caused. People's jobs, people could have really got hurt. The mayor had to come out and say that that is not what happened. In other words, just like Spotify, Bill, no, they're grifters. No, like the mayor said, no, it wasn't a two-hour car chase. No, uh-uh, Megan, no. But instead of taking responsibility, she's appalled and shocked that people wouldn't believe her. And now she's pointing the fingers at Spotify because it was their job to make um, her interview them. Oh, it was their job to make it after you told them what you were going to do? I just believe that. And the difference between the royal family and Spotify and Netflix and, and the New York chase is that they can rebuke or they can debunk what you say. They can come back and say, uh-uh, Megan, that's not what happened. The royal family, on the other hand, just puts out statements like, uh-uh, recollections may vary. But no, we're going to give Spotify and uh, the New York, they're going to give you, they're going to give you facts. They're going to give you a proof that this is not true. He says, I doubt it very seriously that it, that they were being chased for more than even 10 minutes. And so what Americans is starting to see is that, uh-oh, not only is she a narcissist, but she's a liar. And people don't want to come out and just say that, but con artists are liars. They pretend. They manipulate. They swindle you. They pretend. She pretended that she loves Harry. How can you fall out of love in six years? I'm still on my honeymoon we're still uh -uh, we're still on the beach we're still rocking around we're we're still doing it no she lied to harry and told him that she loved him so she could marry him and do the very thing that she thought she was going to do with Spotify and Netflix and well mostly Spotify and 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 she's coming out with her spread and all this other trickery stuff that she's doing. She went into the royal family thinking that she was going to con them, but Queen Elizabeth saw her coming a mile away. And no one could talk to Harry because he was in cloud Megan. And so as he was trying to manipulate, while she was manipulating, Harry was sucking it in and the royal family was like, okay, this, we, we got ourselves something. But she wasn't done. It wasn't enough that she went over there for 15 minutes and pretended that she was going to be a royal because she was never going to be that. That's not, that wasn't on her resume. That wasn't in her vision board to, to, to serve. Like Michelle Obama says, it's a, bright shiny light to serve and she called it out 
Yes, she did. I hope I'm not repeating myself because, you know, I, I start going into that. and Because these are the things that are on my mind that I can't believe. Anyway, let's move on. Let me say this, and I may have already said it. I'm going to pay you $20 million to do a job. You don't do it. You have to do the job. For some reason, I believe because she wasn't going to do it. I think she was difficult, like they're saying. Duchess, difficult. The bullying allegations in the royal family. That report is going to, I don't know when it, maybe it'll come out. I don't know. But why everything that Megan touches ends in tragedy or ends in some way, not her fault, or her blaming them because of what happened. There's nothing good coming out of Montecito. There's, no, there, there, there's nothing good and positive. Other than this woman is relentless on trying to be this megastar. A president. How are you going to go from the royal house to the white house? It's shameful. Is Megan blame Spotify for them not forcing her or telling her to do the interview, which is common sense because it's your podcast. So why would Spotify have to tell me to interview the people, the people, and it's yours. But since you couldn't do it, they had to figure out something else. But it's interesting how it becomes their fault because it didn't get done. She wants to disattach herself from that piece because she don't want to be looked at as the person that actually didn't do the interview. Well, it's true. It, like Neil Sean said, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it was your podcast. It was your responsibility to make sure that it was successful. But Spotify's fault for thinking that the Duchess of Sussex was talented but just going off of the name. They got bamboozled. <laughs> Samantha was on um, Paula M today. It was so good. Because I wanted to know, this is what I've been wanting to know. Who is she? Has she always done this? Because I always talk about Megan's M.O. And her M.O. is is to always look like the one that is the innocent bystander, the one that didn't do anything wrong, and it's everybody else's fault. And it, I know it's like um, people say, well, she plays the victim. It's more than that to me because she takes, it's she, the Spotify. All she had to do is, first of all, don't even say anything. Just let it go. Never complain, never explain. It will go away. If you want negative to go away, shh. Mm -mm. She double downs on it. I'm shocked that you guys didn't think that I was in a two-hour car chase. Where's the proof? The LAPD, not LAPD, the New York Police Department said Show us the video so we can investigate. They closed the case because Harry wouldn't show the video he was taking in the taxi. But it's the paparazzi's fault because they were chasing her. How do you blame innocent people? I call them innocent because she uses them when she gets ready to. But then she wants to degrade them on one end. I want to talk about the media, how nasty they are. But then I want to use you for my benefit. Oh, It doesn't add up. It's not making sense how much we give to her. It is unprecedented that Netflix, Spotify, WME, has now put their brand on the line. In my opinion, 
here's the deal, WME. Just because you brought all of those other A-listers, what they, what you know, help them out with their careers and their brands and stuff, has nothing to do with the Duchess of Sussex. Those people that you've helped have bodies of work. Gwyneth Paltrow has been working since she was two. I'm exaggerating. And her brand was built from the ground up. She worked hard from it. I don't know. I'm not going to go back there. So Samantha tells us that when she was younger, that this is what she did. She would get upset. She would blame everyone else. She would never take accountability. Samantha said one incident was with her father. And she cut him off because he didn't do something. And she cut him off for three, for several weeks. And then she started talking to him again. Well, that's what, that, isn't that what she do to everyone? Isn't that what she's doing to him now? Actually, he's dead to her. It's like victims. She create these victims along the way and then just totally, totally mistreat people. And then they're left out in the cold. Jessica Maloney, her friends, Harry's friends, um, the fam his, their families and everything. <laughs> How are you not going to... How are you, how your family is, 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 is who you are. And if you cut them out, then we don't, we will never know who Megan is. How does Harry know who he's sleeping with if he didn't even meet her father, but he met the mother. I believe that Doria doesn't really have much to say. She's a puppet just like Harry is, but she agrees with everything Harry says and everything Megan says. And so, yes, I believe that there's some small little gang up on. Yeah, Harry, you probably shouldn't do that. Your family is racist. I went to the restroom and, you know, Camilla looked at me up and down or something stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it to an end. She pretty much said, Samantha said that she ghosted her father. But I remember um, um, Thomas Markle saying that, and I, I could be wrong, but it was stated somewhere that Megan didn't want her father to have a relationship with, or Doria, one of them, didn't want her to have a relation, him to have a relationship with his Thomas Markle and Samantha. She wanted them to cut them off. Why? It wouldn't matter if he had to did it. She still would not have a relationship with him because she's ashamed of her father. Like she was ashamed of her family. I think she was ashamed of them. And I also think that she didn't want them to be in the same room with the royals so they could find out, and the A-listers, to find out, oh, really? That's who Megan is? She can tell us all day long in this new memoir that she's supposed to be bringing out. Angela Livin said that she is. I brace myself that she treads lightly because remember two weeks ago, she said she was done trashing the royal family. But here's the kicker. What could she possibly extra have to say about the royal family? What's she going to talk about? The coordination that she didn't attend? Okay. It really, I, it really, Samantha's, what Samantha said to me was a question that I have been wondering for a very long time and she answered it for me. That this is who Megan is. This is who she's been all her life. And it just continued to got worse and worse and worse as she got bigger and bigger and bigger as she climbed up the ladder of success. And now what has happened is she has been exposed. People are seeing it from every side. Like Paula P. Dinah said, 
the black community that don't really watch it and is really following the rules as much for Stephen Smith to say something about it, that's pretty big because he is a big time influencer. He's on a major network over here and people listen to him. And for him to bring their names up and call them grifters and realize that, oh, she didn't do her podcast. They did pay her $20 million. They don't have the talent. What has happened this week has been so damaging to whatever brand she thought that she was going to have the rebrand, the brand that my husband said, maybe they just need to just don't do anything for a moment. Well, that would be the most logical thing to do. But like someone said, Neil Sean, their, their monthly expenses are maybe four to six million a year. And that's not living expenses. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. I totally turned on. <laughs> Give me one second here. Oh, my phone is dying, which means it's time for me to shut up. Actually, guys, that's all I have, honestly. Um, it's been a bad week for Megan, but the stories that keep coming out keep telling me that it doesn't get any better. And what blows my mind, and this is to some of my subscribers, because you know, we have been waiting on accountability for her to say, okay, well maybe maybe this was, I could have did this differently. Samantha said she's never apologized ever as a child. She's never heard her say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it. And what I and, and Samantha admitted it, that she believes without actually saying it that parenting had something to do with Megan's issues telling her no that's something that you can't do which makes me think about my own child because I give her everything and anything that she wants and I'm thinking to myself uh oh I don't want to create another Megan for society. Not really, I'm not going to do that. But telling her no, Kara, give, you can't have this. We can't do this. Bringing that in to our conversations. That's happen, happening. It's been happening. But then she starts crying and giving me that cute little face. I'm like, okay, give her the M&Ms. <laughs> but no. If your sister or your you never heard her apologize or say I'm sorry or maybe it was my mistake, of course she hasn't. Have you have anybody ever heard her say that since we've known her in the last six years? I've never heard her say thank you to the queen. All I've heard her say was how they threw her to the wolves and, and they chased her out of there. Which blows my mind because Tyler Perry said that they didn't chase them, that they were trying to get them to stay. And so the stories are just all com just discombobulated when it comes to Megan. And her narratives and her stories don't add up to what's really going on. And so never saying I'm sorry or taking accountability means there's something wrong with your soul. Mm -mm. This is, let me tell you something. I had to cancel Kara's um, meeting today. We were going over her school stuff in August. And I felt bad that I had to do it, that I couldn't even sleep. And I was just like, oh my God. And then when I actually, I said, can we move it to one o'clock? I moved it to one. It was, I didn't realize it was going to be five people discussing my daughter's education. And I told them, I said, oh, I said, I hope that I, I do apologize that I had to cancel at such short notice and push it back. And I didn't realize that, that I was going to have five of you 
with me and, and so on and so on. Take it accountability, apologizing for wasting people's time or accidentally doing it. She, didn't, she doesn't have any one nice thing to say about the U U United Kingdom's um, people, about Harry's country, about the people in the United Kingdom. Nothing. No, thank you. I appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate you being on the street. Oh, my, oh my God. You, you guys will still be getting thank you. None of that. She came over here pointing the fingers trashing the royal family and trying to make us believe that everybody is out to get her and everybody was wrong and she's right and we need to look at them as being the bad people everyone that she's spotify she doesn't want us to lock Spotify. She wants us to believe that it's Spotify's fault that she didn't do the, it's all Spotify's fault. It's all the paparazzi's fault. It's our fault that we don't believe that she was in a two car chase. This is the thing. She has disrupted, <laughs> disrupted everything that she thought that she was going to do in the United States. And it started, it triggered that two hour car chase triggered it because people wanted to know did it really happen what's really going on and now they want to know more and more and as they find out more and more about her they realize ooh, because like steven said i don't know anything about the roles he said but i do know this my daughter has told me that she lost a $20 million deal with Spotify and she wasn't even on there to interview it. His daughter told him that. 